Over the next six plus months, we're gonna be living in our converted Sprinter van while we're back home in Canada. Where we park the van and where we sleep every night will always be changing. We actually don't even have all of that planned out just yet. We don't even have half of it planned out. However, we have a loose plan based around staying with family and friends and attending special events. We have been staying with family. We're at one of my brother's houses right now, but Sadie is ready to go. Yep. We have her all completely dewinterized. We've got She's basically packed. packed up. So we're deciding where to go next, but without going too far. True. Because we do have some plans. Mm -hmm, we do. I have to get my hair done today. So we do have to stick around, but we're going to find somewhere to go. So over the summer, where we're going to park the van is going to be a combination of a couple different things. Uh, staying with family and friends, parking on their property. We're going to be boondocking. We're going to be staying uh, with Harvest Hosts. And we're also going to be staying at provincial parks and RV parks. You may be wondering what we're talking about when we're talking about boondocking or this Harvest Host thing. Um, and we're going to show you because we've decided this week that we're actually going to head out and we're going to hit three different spots. We're first going to be boondocking tonight. Tomorrow night, we are going to go to a harvest host and then on Thursday we're gonna head to a provincial park that we've never been to for a night of actual camping. Okay so what is boondocking maybe not everybody knows and what is harvest hosting maybe not everybody knows here. So okay Mitch what's boondocking? Well I guess the simplest way of saying it is it's like wild camping and it's staying at places that don't have any hookup services. Um, could be a Walmart parking lot, it could be um, you know the start of a trailhead, it could be you know it's multiple different, different things. It's just you're kind of allowed to park. Um, it could even just be parking on the street, which would be stealth camping. But we'll get into that a little bit more because that is the first thing yeah. that we're going to be doing um, this evening. As far as Harvest Hosts, that's actually on an app. Um, Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome has come together. You can go on an app, you pay a fee. Um, essentially, it's like an exchange of services. It's other people interested. You can stay on their property. Um, maybe it's a business. And the exchange is sort of, you know, maybe you bring them a gift or you shop at the business or the winery or the golf right. course, uh, sort of in exchange for your stay, but right. you're getting that in return and they're getting the business and you're supporting local businesses. So we're gonna do that tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we are leaving here in a few hours. So we have a few things that we have to do to get ready. And first of all, we're going to... Well, we need to uh, fill up with water. Uh, we need to find a spot to empty our block tanks, which is sometimes problematic at the beginning of May before camping season really begins because not everything is open. However, I'm gonna find a spot. Uh, make sure we got everything packed up. We have enough food. And I think next we're gonna see you at our boondocking place later on today and I should have much better hair. <laughs> All right, well, we will catch you uh, when we're pulling into our site. So we're at our spot for the night. <laughs> we are here, we're in Perth, Ontario, and we are at the last dual park. This is the parking area actually where some boats come in. So we're just gonna take you for a little tour and show you what amenities and lovely scenery our boondocking spot for the night has. We are just in a basic parking spot. A very nice night. parking lot. It is, yeah. and we got like, I love it when we can get like the, the end parking spot. So and we a got picnic that. table. And we have a picnic table. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have some dinner here tonight. Um, we're probably just gonna get some work done and chill yeah. in the van. It was a bit rainy earlier, the sun broke out, now it's back in again. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take you for a walk. Um, we're gonna go down by the docks and maybe sit by the water. Yeah. Maybe we should just grab a little wine for that. It works for me. Okay, All right. we'll see you there. So here we are down at the docks. There is zero boats in here today. This is sort of like a boat camping sort spot. Of, sort I don't, of, yeah. yeah. Like you can pay, there's a sign up here, like the boats can come in and slip for the night. And there's actually, you never get this in a boondocking spot, but there is power outlets. So 
if we needed power, we could back in here and actually plug in because um, there's no boats and we wouldn't be using their spot. Um, but this is a really nice serene little dock no, on the edge of town. It's beautiful. Like I've driven by here so many times because uh, I've lived around this area for the last 20 years. <laughs> yes. Um, but never really enjoyed it. And you know, it's a beautiful parking lot. Um, there used to be an old RV park. Um, I think that shut down. Um, it, was, it was during with COVID. COVID. Yeah. yeah. So there was the last dual park campground. campground. Um, but they still have um, public washrooms and showers that are open from May 15th till October 15th um, from like, I don't know, 7 till 6 p.m. I think so so we're a bit early here in the season because we're the day before but tomorrow morning we might just have a shower which would be amazing that'd be yeah. great <laughs> anyway we're just gonna show you the river here and I think there's some beautiful little Muskoka chairs at the end of the stock and we're just gonna go have a seat And here's a little map of the town of Perth. Um, the other amazing thing that we have here, free town Wi-Fi. I know, and it's actually decent. <laughs> yeah. So. It's crazy. We don't have to break out the Starlink tonight. It's great. I know. And the beauty with boondocking, which we're gonna get into, it costs this much to stay. There's yeah. no cost to stay, which is great. Um, sometimes it's harder to find a great spot, um, but I think like we lucked out with this. This is a great spot. For sure. And even when we boondock and we hear about a spot or we get it off the app, we know that they're always sort of an endangered species and it depends on how people treat the place right. and how you know if people show up and they're rowdy or they leave garbage and it just becomes yeah. too much of a pain for the town or the place they're gonna shut it down yeah. um, so if you are looking at boondocking or boondocking is something you do just be sure that when you go there you don't you you don't take anything and you don't leave anything be, be and, respectful yeah um, take your garbage and you know don't be loud and disrespectful and leave room for others and just, I don't, just be good people <laughs> yep. um, because that's the only way these places will continue to survive and continue to be free and yeah, this is pretty nice. Like I know right now we've got a parking lot behind us. That's what you're looking at. Obviously we're looking at the river um, and boondocking spots really do vary. We haven't done a lot. Um, so this one's fairly unique in that there's lots of obvious parking. Yeah. There's Amenities. potential power, I guess, if you wanted. And the washrooms and showers, although they're closed right now, they do open up, um, like Mitch said, May 15th. So that, that is not normally at all what you would find in a boondocking spot. You are right. normally like wild, wild camping and not even like wild camping. You couldn't take a shower in the parking lot. Right. Um, in a lot of places, maybe you can't cook or set up your grill. I feel quite comfortable you could here. Behind Zadie is a big park and there's picnic tables. So this is actually just a really sweet spot. It is, yeah. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else really to say about boondocking other than like there's many different apps that people use to find boondocking spots uh, one of the um, popular one is iOverlander and that's the one we use and um, sort of works all all over North America I think um, to find maybe different even spots beyond. Yeah, yeah maybe even beyond um, but we use that one it works out really really well um, and um, people even post pictures you can leave a review uh, like we can leave a review after we leave here mm -hmm. on our experience on the amenities um, any pictures or any of that kind of stuff right so I think yeah. we'll do that and we've done that last year when we've uh, boondocked well it helps everybody yeah for sure know if it's still a boondocking spot if it's still valid and what to look out for yeah. or you know just sort of what kind of spot it is. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so we're pretty happy. I think we're gonna sit here and relax now that we're just have arrived, um, have a little beverage, <laughs> and uh, then we'll get cooking some supper and just chilling out for the night. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm getting a little editing done here in the van and Mitch is on breakfast duty. So when we're boondocking, we mainly um, tend to cook and stay 
inside the van and not spread out too much. It is good here because we're in a park and there are picnic tables, so we could, if it was nicer out, go and do that, but we are prepared usually, especially for breakfast, to just have that in the van. You cooking up, babe? Well, we'll get a little bit of scrambled eggs, some broccoli, and we'll have, uh, have it with some berries. Nice, simple, nutritious breakfast. A nice van, Brecky. Yeah, and on the positive note, so the uh, showers and washrooms here at Last Duel Park opened up this morning, and I was able to have a nice hot shower. Um, Jan's next um, was actually fantastic. <laughs> He's all shaven. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna hit it up next. I don't think it's a glamour shower, but you know, that's fine. Gets you, gets you clean. Not a glamour shower, but it's a nice hot shower. Um, had really good pressure, so I got no complaints. Free. It's free, totally free. Just like the camping. Yep. Okay, awesome. Ooh, breakfast is ready. We're having breakfast outside. It's a good boondocking spot, I like it. Highly recommend. 10 and out we'll, of 10. 10 out of 10 for sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure we leave the link uh, down below. All right, now to eat. Okay, we're about to take off here. So we're gonna do our 360 circle check that we always do before we go to make sure we haven't forgotten to unhook anything, that we haven't left anything behind, that we've got no garbage. And as we said before, especially when you're boondocking and obviously anywhere, even when you're camping, you wanna make sure that you are not taking anything and you haven't left anything behind. We are totally good. Okay. Everything's clean, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. All right, nothing hooked up? Nothing. Not that we hooked anything up, but... No, we're good to go. All right. We're out of here and on to our next spot. We're driving about an hour, 50 minutes, yeah. to uh, Manatick, which is closer to Ottawa, to our next location. Okay, so we've just checked in with our harvest host and this is so cool. We get to, I don't know, we're venturing back. It's like a farm. They're not even really open yet. They only have like asparagus and their young garlic. So we'll be getting some of that tomorrow. Um, but he told us just to, I don't think it matters which road you take, bud. We're just going back on this road back in their farm. There's a sign here for strawberries. He said when we get to the red shed, turn right we can just stay anywhere there he also said there's like a venue place and he said he's not sure how much of a mess it is but we're welcome to hang out in there that's if so we want cool. so we'll see what that's all about Look at all this oh that says black currants <laughs> Good morning. We have spent the night at our harvest host and uh, it was a good sleep, eh, babe? Had a great sleep. Oh my Lord, it was so nice and peaceful and quiet. Yeah, we're just out here at the farm. We're, uh, we've had some coffee. We're getting some breakfast ready. Um, these hosts have said that they don't care. They don't need us out of here right away. Um, we're not in the way and there's no rush to leave. So that's really nice. Each host might have their own sort of rules. Um, we hope to stop in and get some asparagus and garlic that they're selling. And that's sort of our exchange of payment uh, for the night. I think we talked about that before. There's usually, there's sort of an unwritten rule that you're either purchasing a service, um, something that they provide. If it's a golf course, for example, you might go in and have a meal or have a round of golf. Um, this is just the lovely garden here, just outside of Ottawa. They have a farm, um, so we're gonna buy some of their produce. So it's always different with each host, and sometimes it's just in somebody's laneway. Um, those are not necessarily our favorite. We do like sort of this type of host where, you know, we're gonna be getting some produce or something anyway, and so we get to support the local business at the same time we get a free place to stay 
I'm very excited about today because we're going to a provincial park and a provincial park is probably one of my favorites. <laughs> you can definitely make yourself more at home when you're at a park on your site because you sort of rented that site for the night. You can be outside more, set up cooking stuff and not be so sort of stealth, stealthy and self-contained and trying to I don't know, stay in the van, really. Yeah, but like like Jan said um, a couple of minutes ago, we prefer this type of harvest house where you're not staying like right in somebody's driveway and stuff like that. So we prefer uh, you know, being out in the field and like this is nice and peaceful. There's another RV um, that left a little while ago that spent the night. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just fantastic. We enjoy these types of harvest hosts. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're gonna get some breakfast going, have a bit more coffee and uh, we'll catch you later. Always alone. You will always be the always alone. You will always be the always and that is how easy our setup is with a van at the provincial park it's so awesome we just had to level up but other than that we just drive in yeah. and we're pretty much set up <laughs> we're approaching the may long weekend so in a few days this park is likely going to be extremely full because that is really the kickoff weekend for us Canadians in the summer. It's the first long weekend of the summer. This is when a lot of the parks first open up. It's extremely quiet in here right now. As we drove through, I don't think we even saw one other single camper. We love the campground. We can set up a lot more than when we're boondocking. We have our chairs out. We are gonna set up our dining tent, especially with the mosquitoes this time of year, having the screens and being able to sit outside but still be protected from the bugs um, is going to be wonderful. They are literally swarming around me and the camera right now so I'm going to go get me some bug spray. So like I said earlier, we are leading up to the long weekend. So this park is dead. We're down at the day use site. So every Ontario Provincial Park does have day use areas. They're usually around $18. So you can just come for the day. Uh, usually their day use, they have lots of picnic tables. Um, here they have the outdoor charcoal grills. There's usually a beach, a boat launch docks. You can rent kayaks um, or canoes generally. And uh, we're here on, we're at Rideau River Provincial Park. Um, so that is along the Rideau Canal. Uh, we're just outside of a place called Kempville. Um, we're about an, uh, probably less than an hour from Ottawa. The Rideau Canal, which is this behind us, it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, this canal runs from Ottawa, the Ottawa River, all the way to Kingston at Lake Ontario. And I think we have the entire park to ourselves right now. So we're just walking around, familiarizing ourselves with the place. Hey babe? We are, it's pretty, uh, pretty quiet here. You'll see this summer when we're at other parks just how busy they get. So this is actually a treat to just have it all to ourselves. done here with our three nights at three different sort of camping spots and locations yeah so what's your thoughts well well let's start let's start with boondocking because that was our <laughs> first one where we stayed at uh you know the uh, municipal park in perth yeah so i i feel like that was an exceptional boondocking experience um we have boondocked before and in lovely locations yep. um but i generally feel the places where we boondock um, maybe not comfortable to bring out our cooking things. Right. Um, 
our chairs sometimes, but that's sort of the extent. Everything yeah. else I like to like keep it in the van and right. it just feels better to keep in the van. Yep. However, when we're just like on the move, when we're like heading somewhere and we just need to like stop, maybe eat, chill out for right. a couple hours, crash for the night, get up, have some coffee and go. Boondocking is pretty sweet because sure. it's free. Um, there's no messing around. We don't want to set stuff up anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect for that sort of situation. What do you, yeah. do you think about Harvest Host? Um, I really enjoyed it. So the place we went to, I thought was fantastic because we've stayed at some Harvest Host before where you stay in somebody's driveway or stuff like that, which I don't really like. I like to yeah. have sort of our own space and all that. So this one, we were out in uh, their back field. Um, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. sort of nice sunset. Um, private. You know, private, the morning was beautiful. Uh, you know, we sort of lazed around, had our coffee. Um, it, was, it, was, it was good yes. actually. And it was a farm. So mm -hmm. before we left, we bought fresh asparagus and the yeah. fresh green garden. Um, things that we would have liked to stop and buy at a market anyway right. so that in a sense made it feel more free <laughs> right so I guess with Harvest Host so there is a membership through there, there's a yearly membership that you purchase which is like 99 US dollars so like 135 Canadian dollars for the year and that gives you access to um, you know request uh, visits and all of that kind of stuff um, all over I guess the world I guess right yeah kind of thing so yeah. it's definitely US and Canada so yeah. Um, yeah so I thought it was I thought it was really good and we don't do a ton of the harvest hosts we spent I think $35 there and that's sort of the unwritten rule spend at least $30 um, you know at the harvest host and then last night we stayed at the provincial park which yes. is where we are now we're in the big um, day use area um, so as far as parks go when we are wanting to settle in, especially maybe for a couple of nights, by far um, a provincial park is a nice place to sort of for sure. hang out, chill out, um, mm -hmm. get some work done. There's showers, there's laundry. Yep. There's usually really nice just like roads and trails so we can walk and relax and really sort of make a site our own, right. set up our dining tent, mm -hmm. get the Starlink set up. Yep. Um, so. Again, I think it just comes down to what we're doing because if right. we were, say, on the move and we were just trying to get somewhere and we needed a place to stay for the night, the provincial park is like a bit, um, it slows you down a bit because you've got to come in, you've got to check in and you've got to, you know, get in your site and get level and you don't have to set up anything and that's fine. You right. just feel like you don't get to use the facilities. And whenever right. when I get to a provincial park, I'm like, oh, I, I just want to stay here for like three days no, and exactly. enjoy everything. So, and that's exactly how we feel right now. We're only yeah. here for a day and like we, you know, wish we didn't have to leave because, yeah. you know, it, it's it's beautiful. And the other thing with the provincial parks, you're able to dump your tanks, mm -hmm. uh, fill, uh, fill up with uh, potable water, which we just did. Um, so that's definitely a bonus because if not, we can only go about four days um, with with our fresh water tank and before we have to empty our black and green yep. tanks kind of thing. So we have to either hit a provincial park or we have to find somewhere that allows us to dump. And there's, I guess there are a fair amount of places, um, but sometimes you have to drive to get to them and uh, prices range anywhere from like $10 to $40 to empty your tanks. So, um, and the cost of a provincial, a provincial park site, again, we don't need any um, electricity. So we get the unserviced sites and they go for $38.95 um, a day. However, it's sort of interesting when you book online with Parks Canada, they charge you uh, like an, almost an extra $10 for the online yeah. reservation fee. Um, so all of a sudden that $38.95 turns into like basically $55 for the night. Yeah, it's much better, obviously more economical if you're booking for several nights or a week right. or something because that $10 then gets diluted over those nights. Right. Uh, yeah, but when you're doing a one night booking, it's kind of like, oh, ouch. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I, I don't know why they do that, but uh, that's that's part of the part of the game. And if you're looking for a service site at the provincial parks, they're normally around like the $52 mark. Right. I think this summer we're going to be doing quite a nice combination of for all sure. of these things as we take you along on our adventures. Um, certainly um, we are headed to Newfoundland. I think we've mentioned this um, later this summer. And I don't know if you can tell I'm squirming. There's a <laughs> lot of mosquitoes out. It's definitely mosquito season yep. here in Ontario. Um, so, 
yeah, hope you've enjoyed this mm -hmm. and understand maybe boondocking a little bit more. And if you've never heard of Harvest Hosts and maybe that's interesting to you, um, that you can just look up online. We can right. maybe leave the link below. Sure. And if you have any questions, please drop a question below and we'll get back to you. Um, yeah, and if you know of any parks, especially in Ontario, because um, that's where we are certainly spending the majority of our summer, if you have any favorite provincial parks, um, please let us know. Mm -hmm. Even private parks, we don't tend to be um, quite as big of a fan of mm -hmm. private parks, but that's no shade on anyone. They they um, they vary a lot. Yeah. They tend to be a bit more expensive, yeah. we find, mm -hmm. and sometimes a little less privacy um however they can be a lot of fun too because uh you have those seasonal people will sure. definitely be visiting a private park or two uh this summer but please let us know your favorite uh ontario Absolutely. provincial parks so that we can check them out if we haven't already <laughs> don't know where we're headed next so that will be a surprise for everyone <laughs> um so if you like the video please give us a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please consider it We've got a lot of awesome things happening um over the next couple of months and we love uh, to share our journey with you yeah, so that's all for now. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.